Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, something different. Uh, this video will consist of two subjects. The first subject we're going to talk about is Comcast Xfinity, and this is the one main reason why I am with the Comcast Xfinity. Uh, number one, they are in the United States the highest ranking supplier for the uh, cable and internet. They have the highest internet speed and they have a very sophisticated uh, X1 Xfinity box. But let's not advertise them. I'm just letting you know that they are the biggest cable company in the United States. You know, you might not agree with them, what they do uh, in the pricing, but they are the nationwide United States, the biggest suppliers of the cable services. Anyway, what I want to talk about here is the fact that, uh, first of all, I don't work for them, okay? Just in case you guys want to get something twisted, I do not work for Comcast. I'm not in affiliated with them. I'm just letting you know what they are getting pretty soon out on the market, okay? And this is regarding the 4K. Here's, I'm on my, uh, what you're seeing here, it's my a uh, 4K iMac with the i7 processor. Uh, third generation i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 4K. It's a 4K Retina screen. All right, but I'm just letting you know when I'm showing you this on. I don't mean to brag about it or anything like that. I had this for a while. I'm just letting you know it is a 4K. It is a Retina screen. It's great, but nothing you know to write home about. You know. Anyway, besides the point. What I'm trying to show you here is the uh, the Comcast new X1 4K UHD HDR DVR box that it's finally coming. And this is a good news for the uh, Comcast uh, owners and, and those of us who are subscribed to Comcast and Xfinity. So anyway, it says right here that the Comcast has finally started to deploy its latest DVR for the company's X1 platform for Ultra HD Smart TVs called the uh, XG4. The new Xbox offers support 4K resolution and high dynamic range in video sources according to industry sources. The new setup device is made by the company Ares and has a of recently appeared on Comcast X1 device comparison website, which we will check later on. Uh, also, FCC Federal Communication Fillings, which offers further details on the nature of the XG4 box and 4K use capabilities. As for Comcast itself, uh, it has remained pretty quiet about the box, declining to respond to media inquiries through sources. Uh, they're not saying anything yet until they officially release it. As for its known specs, the new X1 platform Xbox comes with a DVR, has total of six tuners, has a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, has a 4K HDR support specs, so you'll be able to take advantage of HDR. The supported HDR format, it's HDR10 and no Dolby Vision quite yet. The reason they're not jumping into Dolby Vision, because Dolby Vision, it's still... Uh, the jury's out on that one. Uh, I mean, how many Dolby Visions uh, they are out there that you can take advantage of? So... They're mainly concentrated on the HDR, but it's pretty cool for a cable. I mean, the, the, the fact that you'll be getting a 4K and HDR, so you'll be able to watch your HBO and your ESPN programming on, on uh, HDR 4K, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, they're saying that the content will not be uh, available right at launch. This will come later on, first with the, uh, according to a Comcast source, to the Xfinity forums. Netflix on X1 Premium Plan, XG, 1V4, and a 4K TV letter phases of 4K will include selecting Xfinity On Demand Live TV and DVR content. The XG4 box will also be capable of pairing other Bluetooth devices and speakers. Uh, so here's the thing, uh, this is still in works. All right, we don't know exactly when this is going to be released. I'm probably guessing September, right around maybe September, October. We might see some of these boxes being out there put out, you know, right around beginning of the fall. You're not going to see it during the summer. So I'm, I'm telling you right now, don't count on it seeing it during the summer. 
this is probably something you might see early September, late September, or early October. You might see some of these boxes uh, start coming out. And we don't know the pricing and how much this is going to cost and how much they're going to charge you for it. So that's yet to be seen. But this is a good news for the Xfinity Comcast owners. This is a good news because you know if you stay with the Comcast, if you stay with the Xfinity, you will get the 4K. You will get the 4K uh, abilities. So that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And I'm kind of glad I have been with them for so long now. And they do have the, the best internet, I'll admit, man. So this is the good news uh, for you uh, Comcast Xfinity owners. Now, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be cheap. Uh, the receiver itself probably will cost you. Your bill will be higher with this receiver. And then the pricing and the packaging and all that. So it's definitely not going to be cheap. Uh, so this is something you might have to cut some corners on the internet and cut some channels and whatnot. So, but we'll see what they're going to do. Okay. All right. Let's get on to another thing here. Uh, let's talk about another subject. Like I said, there's two subjects of this video. First one was the uh, Comcast new X1 4K uh, XG4 receiver box. Now let's talk about the second thing here. The second subject of the video. All right, what you're seeing here, it's my TV. Uh, this one's a 65 inch. I have a 55 inch, uh, but pretty much the technology inside, it's exactly the same. The only difference is the size. Uh, and this is the official review that's being reviewed by 4K.com. 4K.com, these guys are uh, truly professionals and uh, they will give you their thoughts and, of course, their opinions. But overall, uh, they are fair. Uh, they do review a bunch of reviews, as you can see right here. Let me highlight. They do a bunch of reviews on a bunch of different TVs, as you can see right here, from Sony, from Samsung. So these guys are pretty fair. Uh, they don't have any uh, dog on, on this fight. They're not, you know, being sponsored by anybody. They're pretty much independent but they are professionals and the 4k.com to me is the best source of anything 4k honestly if you want anyway let's go ahead and let's read this review and remember this is review by uh, 4k.com it's it's not me saying this this is what they're saying and i'm the reason i'm doing this is to put some of these OLED haters to rest because uh, I've seen a bunch of people trying to justify their LED TVs and they're trying to shit on OLED for no particular reason other than just the fact that they hate OLED. They just hate OLED. And the only reason they're hating it is because they have LED full backlit TV and they want to justify their horse. They want to justify their hard-earned you know, hard cash they spent. As if someone made him spend that, you know. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's talk about this review. All right, this review, it's by Steven. It was done on September 5th, 2016, last year. And this is what he wrote. As of this writing in 2016, LG has released four different OLED 4K UHD TVs, all of which come with multi-standard standard high dynamic range com compatibility built into them. These are the two ultra premium picture on glass flat screen models with highly unique design a very hefty price called the g6 and e6 now the one you're seeing here is c6 all right so here's what he says C6 and E6 cousins, and between each other, the C6, B6 TVs are distinguished only by the C6 curved display, and it's the only curved display, and its inclusion of 3D technology. These things aside, the C6 delivers virtually equal color, black level, brightness, and motion specs performance to all of the its current 2016 OLED 4K cousin. And this is what makes this particular TV such a great value. This is what I was trying to tell you guys. 
uh, priced at a level that only small margin higher than those of the best LG OLED models for 2015, like a EF9500 and 65-inch OLED 65C6P and 55-inch OLED 55C6P version deliver considerably better HDR performance and some truly stunning levels of peak brightness. Okay, let me read this one more time for you. This version delivers considerably better HDR performance on both Dolby Vision and HDR and some truly stunning levels of peak brightness that are not only super by the standards of OLED 4K TV technology, but would also surpass or give many LCD 4K televisions a serious run for their money. For their money. And this is what I was trying to tell you guys. With this TV... I paid less than the original price tag. I paid brand new 1600 And I've gotten all of these accolades on this TV. This is what I was trying to come across here. With this TV, not only are you getting 3D technology, not only are you getting Dolby Vision, but at the same time, you're getting the OLED technology. And you're also getting a much better HDR performance and much better peak brightness from all the other L, uh, OLEDs out there. And to me, this is a great, great value for the money, for what I had paid for. I already have LED. I already got Agilent KSA Thousand has an excellent peak brightness, and I'm not living in some big giant house with a lit up rooms all over the place where I need to have that peak brightness at that level. No one's going to be watching TV at that such high peak brightness, man. Your eyes would hurt. So this is why I went ahead with this model. Let's talk some more. Keep in mind, I didn't pay the full price. It is very important that you remember this, what I'm saying here. I never paid a full price, and, I, and it's a brand new, straight out of the freaking truck, fresh Brand new for sixteen hundred. I've saved about five hundred dollars, maybe even more. Six, I think six hundred dollars. I saved right there. And look what I'm getting with this TV. Look at the accolades I'm getting for the price. Just the same accolades I got with the Samsung KS eight thousand. You know how much I paid for the KS eight thousand last year for the sixty five inch twelve hundred, and it was priced at eighteen hundred, close to two thousand. The, the, the whole idea I made this channel is to tell you that you don't have to spend ridiculous amount of money by some gimmicks out there. And all these gimmicks that you see on these YouTube, these guys will never reply to you because they're being sponsored. They can reply. They're being sponsored by all these different companies, Sony, Samsung, LG. They're under the contract. They can't say shit. I can say whatever I want to say because I'm not being sponsored by anybody. I'm a free agent. Okay, I'm independent and I can say whatever I want to say. And this is why you should listen to people who are independent, like me. I have no betting horse. I'm not a fanboy. I have Samsung. I have OLED. I have a bunch of other. I even have an old Samsung Plasma TV. Okay, I have a bunch of PCs. I have a bunch of VRs. I have a bunch of different technology. I am not in any shape or form a goddamn fanboy. And this is, some pro this is the problem you guys seem to be having. And don't seem to understand. Don't seem to get this channel. And there's a reason why I reached 12,000. Not that I really give a shit about my subscribers. I mean, I, I really don't care about subscription. About how many subscribers I have. I don't care. I don't beg anybody to subscribe to me. I never begged anybody in September. Find me a video where I begged for subscribers. Subscribe. I never ask anybody to subscribe to me. Even since last year, September, when I started this whole damn channel. Nor am I asking it now. So I want you to keep that in check. All right? And nor do I talk out of my ass, nor am I trying to favor one over the other. I'm just telling you my own personal experience. I'm telling you, if you can get this TV for a good deal, I'm not saying go buy all it. It's the best thing ever. It's the uh, be all and all TV. It's not. There's no perfect TVs. There's never ever going to be a perfect TVs. There's only a personal preference. What is it you want? What is it that you like? If you like something, you don't need to 
You don't need any kind of approval from me. If that's what you like, that's all that matters. Go with it. You don't need my justification. I don't need to justify it for you to tell you, oh, this is what you need. No. If you like it, you like it. That's all that matters. Buy it. You should never buy something based on what someone else tells you. Buy it because you want it. But don't go in there trying to justify your purchase. See, that's the problem on the YouTube. A lot of people are trying to justify their purchase. I'm not justifying anything here. I'm just letting you know what this TV can offer. If you want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, that's cool. I'm not pressuring or am I forcing anybody to buy this TV. The only reason I'm making this video is just to quiet down these LED fanboys, okay? Is this a great TV? No, it's not a great TV. It has some positives, it has some negatives. Is Samsung KS9800 great TV? No, it's not a great TV. It has some problems as well. Some positives, some negatives. Is KS8000 great TV? No, it's not. It has some positives, has some negatives. Is Z9D a great TV? It almost could be, but it still has some issues. It still has some problems that it's hard to recommend, especially at the, at the price value. Okay, it's missing a few other uh, things out there that, that, that doesn't completely make it great. All right, so if you're looking for this Holy Grail TV, you're never going to find it. If you are, are trying to compete with technology, you're going to end up bankrupt. You're never going to be able to compete with technology. So what is the point of this whole dick measuring my horse better than your horse? I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. Go with what you like. Doesn't mean everyone's going to like what you like. But hey, as long as you like it, that's all that matters. Me, personally, I'm happy with this all. It, I mean, the fact that I spent half the price of the original attack price, and I got the 3D, I got Dolby Vision, I got HDR, and now I have best of the both worlds. I have both LED and OLED. They're both white color gamut. They both... Well, the one has a better, higher peak brightness, obviously, so I'm enjoying that. It's better for the gaming. I'm talking about a Samsung KS8000. But this one's great for the movies, for the sports. It has much better motion flow than the uh, Samsung KS8000. It has that judder. This one doesn't have any judder. It's a very smooth motion flow. And plus has 3D. And even this guy. Here's the good. First and foremost, we love the physical design of this 26 in OLED TV. It lacks the truly unusual... Uh, Fast, uh, fanciness of the picture on glass G6. Okay, so he's talking about the design. But it's nearly identical E6 counterparts, but the C6 is still a beautiful piece of display, uh, display technology. Let me read it one more time. Here's the guy comparing it to like this signature E6, one that Ridley Scott talked about, his counterpart. But the C6, it's still a beautiful piece of display technology. It's silvery black body, elegant, extremely slim, a long upper part of display, a little over 8. So it's still a great TV. And at the end, what did he say? Uh, the clear plastic, okay, the C6 looks more like a floating window into the another reality than a simple TV screen. It's simple trick on the eyes, but we love how it looks and darken the living room. All right, moving beyond superficial, the really superb display performance of the OLED 65 6P and the OLED 55 inch, it's something we can't help but marvel at, especially for its mix of stunning brightness and black perfection, which further makes those bright areas of the display stand out, stand out, basically. Here, let me read it one more time. Uh, TV, C6 TV, it's something we can't help but marvel at, especially for its mix of stunning brightness and the black perfection, which further makes those bright areas of display stand out. Like we said, those two models perform almost identically to their prices, to their pricier G6 signature and E6 signature. As a result... The screen of the C6 can be considered one of the best 4K displays we have seen yet in 2016. The color performance is excellent with a very high 93.9% DCI P3 white color gamut coverage and full 10 bit color. And this means full HDR qualification as far as colors can go. 
Do I even need to read anymore? So please, guys, all you LED lovers and your OLED haters, give it a rest. Give it a rest. You either a jealous that I got this great deal on this TV, or you maybe you're jealous that I have both TVs, KS8000 and this one. Uh, I don't have any betting horse here. I don't care. I'm just telling you that this is a good TV for the price that I paid. And if you if you can't get this TV for a good deal for like sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred, you can go wrong. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. I'm not saying this is the greatest TV ever made. It's not, but I'm simply saying for the price what I had paid for, this is a great TV. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully this, uh, which I doubt this will get through uh, haters. Uh, look. These haters, they're haters. Doesn't matter what I say. Doesn't matter what I show them. They're going to hate one way or the other. Uh, they're, they're called fanboys for a reason. They're fanboys. They're going to live their entire life of fanboys. And they there's no help for them. They are no medicine. There is nothing that you can help them. They're sick in the mind. Uh, it's a disease. They have a disease and it's in their head. And that's it. That's all I got to say about the fanboyism. Anyway, there you guys go. Have it. Enjoy the video.